That is great. and forth with the power drill um, to get it back in to get to the service uh, facility if you had to. Of course, got awning lights that you see. I've um, got 12 volt plug-ins on the outside here for whatever you'd like. You have your fresh tank fill. So this is gonna be one access to water that you have. You can fill this tank up before you leave the campground or before you leave your house. Um, if you're going somewhere that doesn't have a city water full hookup and uh, use your water pump and uh, turn that on. on the inside you have an unlimited water supply like normal um, you have your furnace exhaust here it's gonna just blow and return hot air but the best thing to have on these is the mud dauber screens they'll help keep mud daubers and bees and wasps and whatever the yearly bug is from getting in there and building nests especially mud daubers because they can um, build them hard rock nests and they can end up busting off uh, pieces of the squirrel cage that moves around in there now um, I have an over the stove vent here that just kind of pushes in and snaps closed whenever you're driving. But if you want, if you're going to use that stove, you can pop the two tabs open and open it so it has a flap. Um, see, it says on the window you got an enclosed, removable, accessible um, underbelly panel. So basically, what it means is instead of the old school underbelly that's on most units, this has big plastic panels underneath um, that can be. I think, it's, I think they're screwed in and you can pull those down. So it still gives you your insulation and your protection that you got from the old underbelly, but it gives you the accessibility that if you had to get in there and work on anything, we're not slicing that underbelly and you know tearing it up and having to patch it back closed. And it's also easier for the customer to get in if they wanted to you know, try to pick something themselves, maybe after they're out of warranty or something. So that's a pretty nice feature. I'll give it to Ozark on that one. That's a, a new, new thing they're coming out with. Um, let's see, we'll move around the backside. You have you have an outside shower hookup inside this storage here. It's just simple on and off, hot and cold, pretty easy to operate. And then you have your water heater, simple six gallon gas um, 
propane gas only water heater um, they uh, basically turn your gas on up front after you have it full turn it on and go and when you get to your campground say if it was empty you'd want to put your drain plug in which is an inch and a sixteenth socket put that in tighten it up good and it's not you can't put it in finger tight then after that turn on your hose it'll start filling as long as it's not bypassed on the inside and then you come out here lift this valve open once it starts shooting out water you know it's full close it and then you can turn on your gas and it'll you hear it click and it'll fire and then from there you just go like you would at home it'll shut off and come back on when it needs to when it senses that it needs to and then the same way you drain it you know, after the campground unless you're going to go right back out the next you know next few days the next week it's usually best to drain it um, to prolong, prolong the life of the anode rod in so the water doesn't get stagnant um, but you just lift up on that valve again to relieve the pressure and then pull that rod out and leave it out until the next time of course we got a spare tire on this model yeah your city water connection so this is going to be if you're in any campsite at home wherever hook up your hose turn it on and go it is best to run a pressure regulator behind this um, usually at the the faucet itself the spigot itself then run the hose either to your filter or directly into here and run it like that now this is a black tank flush which i'll get to but down below you have your tank drain so you have one on the right which is your black it's got a black handle and then the gray um, black is always the bigger of the two so it's got the big three inch pipe compared to the, the smaller inch and three quarters or two inch pipe that, that most gray tanks have now the black is your toilet and the gray is your bathroom sink kitchen sink and shower um, it's always best when you get to your dump site to pull the black first of course undo this first hook up your hose put it in the put it in the ground pull your black first wait till it's done completely close it and then pull your gray that's going to prevent backwash um, on different systems and this one's not it isn't going to happen that much but it's always best and that helps clean out the hose also so the last thing you're touching is the gray water which is the shower and sink and stuff so you don't have to worry about uh, black water being in there um, but the black tank flush that's up here once you're done dumping the black tank after you're done dumping both of them you can open this back up keep your hose hooked up and then hook up a water hose into here and that's going to shoot water inside that tank and help clean it out um, as best it can and that's a one of the most important things to do to keep the you know keep the smells down to keep your tank sensors reading correctly and um, just overall it'll help inside the, the tank prolong life and everything there's also chemicals you want to use those periodically too you got a 30 amp detachable power cord, so that'll go with you. you. Put that up in your storage when you're done. You have Swintec slides um, on these, which is not too much you need to do. You could spray maybe a dry lube on these every once in a while, but it's not something you really need to worry about. Um, the main part is the roof. See, it's got the rubber roof that's up on the roof and up here on the slide roof, how it comes down. You'd want to condition that once a year with a um, rubber seal conditioner or a. Um, oh, a rubber roof conditioner just washes on like a car wash and spray it off and that'll help keep that rubber pliable so it doesn't crack and dry rot over years of use got cable and satellite prep if you want to hook up into that if one of the campgrounds you're going to has it it's got furion prep backup camera so if you want to have uh let's install one of those or you can install one yourself you can okay First stop I'll make is at the top of the monitor panel. It's going to tell you your battery level, fresh tank level, black tank level, which is your toilet, and then gray tank, which is your bathroom, sink, kitchen sink, and shower. And now these are, you know, subjective. Sometimes they're not as accurate as um, as we'd like them to be because they they have a tendency to get stuck stuff on the in the tank stuck to the sensors and they can throw different readings. So you can't always trust them. So if you just dumped it and it still says it's full, a lot of times it just needs cleaned out and it'll knock that junk off the sensor. From there you have your water pump if you are using the fresh tank just flip that on and it'll start um, sucking from that tank and then you can it'll shut off once it's pressurized water heater for gas like i said earlier you just flip it on it'll light after a few tries sometimes you have to, if it doesn't light it's got a fault light up here that'll go off once it does light 
So if that stays on after, you know, a couple minutes, usually you just gotta flip it off, give it a second, turn it back on, let it try again. Since the uh, it's at the rear of the unit, sometimes it takes a little while for the gas to get back here. Got a awning and a slide out switch and then two light switches for the, the outside lights and the inside lights. Um, let's see, the refrigerator. I want to show this because I get I've got this call a few times on this fridge because they're not the only one using this fridge. It's harder to see, but up under here, this is the 12 volt fridge um, from Everchill, and it has you know your temp control settings and whatnot, so you can go through and go from colder to coldest. And then I don't know if the older ones didn't say this or not, but to turn this unit off, you're supposed to just be able to hold this for. Um, 10 seconds I think it says and it'll shut off so that's the way you have to actually shut the fridge off I, I think the older models didn't say that and it was confusing for people so we'll leave that off it doesn't really need to run in the showroom anyways turn that off um, it does have a lock on it that way when you're traveling you want to keep that so these doors don't pop open Let's see back here you got your thermostat for the furnace it's just simply flip this lever over um, if I do it, the furnace will kick on. I don't want to do it in here, but you just push the lever over, and then um, that gives you pretty much your cooler or warmer. You know, the furnace will light. That's gas only furnace in these. A couple USB 110 chargers or outlets. So you got the, the big one piece sink, which is nice, um, especially in a you know, smaller unit. You don't see such a big sink in some of these. Um, automatic lighting oven, so you just turn it, or cooktop hold it in once there's gas it'll actually light um, got an on off switch of course for the lights standard microwave um, you got over the fan lights over the stove light and fan pretty nice. let's see below over here you got um, if you wanted to put a TV in here you could mount a TV uh, there's a backer back behind here that you can go into just be careful not to use long screws and go through the outside um, or you could just set it up here. It's probably be the best thing to do, but you could mount it if you'd like. Just take it down whenever you travel. You have coaxes up here that you'll hook into if you're wanting to run off the antenna. You have what they call a booster, which is that black button. So if you're running off the antenna, um, you'll go into the antenna port, which one of these says antenna. I can't see from back here, but hook into the antenna port. Make sure that green light's on. Run a channel scan and you'll pick up however many channels you can, depending on where you're at. Now, if you are hooked into the cable that was on the back side of the unit, you'd want that off because um, it will interfere with the signal. It's also pre-wired for Wi-Fi from King Jack. Um, their their Wi-Fi system that's out there that you have to buy separately, but you can hook up the router there. The AC's super simple. It's got a manual control. You've got low fan, high fan, low cool, high cool, and off. And then, then you got pretty much a, a low to high temp control on here. Um, Pretty nice. These uh, seem to be a, a solid unit. They've uh, been around forever and they seem to work good. USB and 110 chargers on both sides. It's got a, just a little bit of storage underneath the front bed. Rising day and night shades. Just pull up, pull down. Or day shades, sorry, not day and night. Pretty nice. Emergency exits. Got those shades throughout the entire unit. Of course, except for behind the stove, that is a, a by-law thing. I guess I've got that call um, a couple times. Um, you could you could change them out, but it is by-law. They have to put these metal blinds in here because of grease. So I wouldn't recommend changing them out. Those black ones look pretty nice. But And the last thing is the bathroom. It's not too much in there. You have a GFI reset breaker over there behind the sink. So any of the outlets that are near water, the ones over here in the kitchen, the ones outside, if they're ever not working, You'd come in here and check and make sure that that isn't tricked. If it is, you just push the middle button in until it resets. You got your Dometic 310 toilet. Got some paper in there. You just push down to fill it up and then all the way down to flush it. Of course, simple shower. Um, that's pretty much it. You got a fan above the stove there to exhaust some fumes. I think that is really it for the uh, um, Ozark 1800 QXX.